Hi, Year 10. Uh, today we're looking at factorizing by common factor. This is again a bit of revision. Uh, we're going to go through some key uh, common mistakes uh, that we need to avoid um, and go from there. All right. Uh, these first couple of examples we're looking at, uh, we're asked to find a common negative factor. Okay, so because the question requires us to find a negative factor, we have to. Um, in the case where we have, say, one negative and one positive term, uh, you can actually choose whether or not usually to take out a positive or a negative factor. Uh, in the case that there are two negative factors, uh, it's the convention to take out a negative factor. Okay, uh, so when we're doing this, uh, we simply just look at the numbers here, regardless of whether they're positive or negatives, and we try to find uh, the highest common factor. We've got a four and a six, so the highest common factor is going to be two, but because the question says we've got to make it negative, uh, and then we, uh, when we're doing factorizing, once you found the common factor, we then look to uh, think what term would I need to multiply that number by to get back to where I was. So if I had minus 4m and I've taken out a minus 2, I need a 2m uh, to multiply with to get back to minus 4m. And then to get to plus 6, uh, if I've taken minus 2 out, I'm going to need a minus 3. Okay, so just be careful of the signs. Make sure you get that negative three there, not positive three, because uh, you're multiplying it by negative two. Okay, uh, for B, uh, again, we've got eight and 12. Uh, the highest common factor is four. We're going to take out a negative, and we're left with 2K, and then it's going to be a plus 3M, okay, because we need to multiply it to equal negative 12M. So just be careful of the sign when you're taking out a negative factor. Okay, uh, factorize the following. Uh, in this case, we have some common factors that are pronumerals. Uh, so this one is relatively straightforward. Take out a P and then we need a Q plus R in order to get back to where we were. Uh, for B, our highest numerical factor is going to be two. And then we can also take out an M and then we're gonna think, what do I need to multiply two M by? It's going to be 3n and it's going to be minus 2. Okay, just check. Uh, the great thing about factorizing, you can always check if your answer is right by expanding in your head once you've done it. 2m times 3n equals 6mn. Good. 2m times minus 2 equals minus 4m. All good. Okay, uh, with this one here, I have a numerical factor of 4, a pronumeral factor of k. And then I'm left with 3k and 2. Okay, you can always expand it back to get back to where you were. All right, final thing here. Uh, we need to just be aware of our index laws. Uh, when we're taking out powers, uh, we want to try and take out the largest index that we can possibly. And then we've got to think about how, how many would we need uh, to get back to where we were when we are uh, drawing in the terms in the brackets. So. Firstly, uh, there are no numerical factors in this first one, but we can take out an A3. That is the uh, the biggest number uh, a power that I can take out that goes into both A to the 3 and A to the 5. So we're left with just a 7 and then a 4, and then we're going to think about adding powers. So if I take out A to the 3, when I multiply two terms with the same base, I add the powers. So this is going to have to be a to the 2, okay? Because 3 plus 2, when I multiply, uh, will give me a to the 5. Okay, and then finally, uh, our highest numerical factor is going to be 3. Uh, we can take out 1p, and we can take out q to the 3. Um, and then we're going to be left with 5p minus 4q. So what I did uh, to work that out is, uh, firstly, I scan the question. I look for uh, how many p's do I have in each term? I only got one p, so I can only take one out when I factorize. Um, how, what's the powers of q? And I've got a p to, q to the 3 and then a q to the 4. Take out the q to the 3 because that's the highest power that I can. That's in common with both terms. And then I've got to think about what do I multiply this by to get back. So times by 5. Uh, p times p equals p squared, and then we've got q3 out already, and then it's going to be a minus, uh, so we get minus 12, 
And then uh, just one more cue to get to Q to the four. Okay, uh, good luck with the questions today. I'll see you later.